So I'm Jez Miller, Infrastructure Architect at Heartland Payment Systems. Heartland Payment Systems is a $2 billion market cap public company, Fortune 1000, and uh, we are the fifth largest credit card processor in the country. I was Director of Operations for a team of about uh, seven people, and we had two active-active data centers, and we had full transaction processing. Uh, we were a much smaller company at the time, or a division of Heartland that was running standalone. And we had the typical problem of ops was meant to keep everything secure and stable, and dev wanted to move very quickly. And so we had that, that very common dichotomy of speed versus stability that is sort of the, the dev and ops uh, conflict. There's a lot of people out there that have been ops guys where it's like, oh, you want to scale? Okay, let me buy some servers and plug them into a rack. And when you've got a virtualized infrastructure for one and then you start automating it with Puppet, you can turn things up on, in minutes where it used to be months. So you can literally get an infrastructure available before a dev team is up, even ready to go to production with a code base. Conversations with development went from, oh, that's tough, and we don't know that, and we're not experts, and oh, we're going to have to touch some scary things because we don't want to disrupt production processing. We went to, no, we can change that quickly and easily because we know we can roll those exact changes through QA, we can validate them, and really treat the infrastructure as a code base as well. And, and that really fundamentally changed what we were able to do as a company and the speed at which we were able to deliver. One of my biggest metrics is uh, P1s, P2s, which are defined as downtime that impact customers. Driving down outages or potential issues that are created just from us bringing new features to the market really saves us. So that's just a fundamental metric for us because those metrics are the ones that we sit in front of our C-level people with, you know, the CEO, CEO CFO, uh, CTO. Though, that's what they want to see. Those, every time we get one of those, that's potentially dollars out the door. That's, you know, that's money. Downtime is money lost. So avoiding those, um, you know, driving mean time to resolution, being able to deal with when we do see an event to knowing how to fix it, where the problem is, you know, dealing with system variances through automation drives those down as well and allows you to pinpoint where the changes are, what was the most recent change made. We track all of those metrics for different systems and we see that the, the systems that we have that are fully puppetized, those go away. We don't have those variances anymore. So that's not even a part that we track anymore because it, it doesn't happen to us. You know, the number of issues for us that we had from production emergencies from, that were triggered from an ops change essentially went to zero because we were able to roll them out in an automated fashion and then test those changes in the various environments. So by the time it got to production, it had already been through three other environments, dev, integration, customer tests before it got to production. We went from an all hands on deck, you know, war room sort of deployments to non-events, scheduled tasks, everyone would go home for the weekend. You know, we would deploy the code or, or the server change or whatever it was, um, validate it, and then everybody could go home and go to sleep at night and know that their pagers weren't go off because that high trust was there. Um, so, you know, we had metrics for the length of duration for the deployment and those, those shrunk from the orders of, you know, 10 hours to 10 minutes. But everyone's worried about working their way out of a job by automation, and that's, the complete opposite, it's you get your life back and then you stop doing those manual tasks at work that aren't fun, that aren't developing your skills, that aren't keeping you engaged as an employee, and now you're doing really cool stuff and you're solving a whole different set of problems in a whole new way, and now the company's doing more, so it benefits, but you're also doing more in your own career, so it benefits you. You, know, you start stacking up those resume lines because you're not just, I do system patching for a living. You, know, you, you can solve much bigger problems. You know, the capacity of the team to deliver on tasks is accelerated because you can see what they're working on, you can see what the deliverables are. It allows the team members to remain focused. And because things aren't constantly blowing up in your face, you're not firefighting, you're not reacting, those are, that's all lost time. That's lost time to the team and lost time to the business to be moving forward and doing something that's gonna keep you, you know, relevant in the market or ahead of your competitors. And, and, that's, and that can be the difference between being a successful company or you know, looking for new jobs. Now that we have some good proven success on some aspects of the company, I want to take some of those wins of auditability 
and repeatability and change visibility and bring that to the rest of the company and bring those to those other platform teams and show them that this is a good thing, that this is valuable to that team in the management of their own platforms and it stop the firefighting, keep consistent platforms, let people sleep at night, you know, give people their lives back and, and really make their development lives and their operational lives easier and make them successful within their businesses.